Hey all, welcome back to another episode of Car Topics Explained. Today's video is another highly requested one. I am going to be covering the three Honda Civics from the first Fast and the Furious movie, otherwise known as the Heist Civics, or the Hijacking Civics. In terms of parts and performance, these cars weren't very special. Each car was an EJ2 DX Coupe with an automatic transmission. And just as a side note, most of the cars you see on screen are automatics because having auto transmissions made it easier for the stunt drivers to slide them around and do whatever tricks they needed to do. Anyways, back to the Civics. The fact that they were DX Coupes means the cars were powered by the D15B7 motor and they made a whopping 102 horsepower. The 0 to 60 is about 10 seconds, and the quarter mile time is 18 seconds at 65 miles an hour. Not exactly amazing. <laughs> and on top of that, the cars only had a handful of modifications. The cars were all painted factory black from the 1994 model year. The body kits were Vis Racing GT bomber kits, and the rear wings were Veilside style combat dual deck spoilers. Of course, on one of the cars, the top deck of the rear spoiler was removed so that the stuntman could stand on it during heist scenes. The exhausts were mostly stock, with the exception of them having what can be best described as eBay mufflers. So obviously these cars didn't sound amazing in real life. So they used the sounds of the same Turbo Integra used for the sounds of Brian's Eclipse. This is why you sometimes hear the same gritty Type S blow-off valve sound. And the sounds of a few other cars were used, along with having animal sounds blended in. Yep, you heard me correctly. Animal sounds. The green neon underglow was done by Street Glow. The rims, or wheels, were 17-inch Axis Neos supplied by James Chen, and they had Yokohama tires wrapped around them. The Mashimoto or Hashimoto ZX tires referenced in the film are not real and were just made up so that they could have a line describing tire marks without making any tire companies mad by associating them with criminal activities. Mashimoto ZX tire. And that's pretty much all of the modifications they did to the cars. The interiors weren't touched at all. Unless if you count replacing the auto gear knobs with ones from manual cars as a modification which is something they did for interior shots. And here's an interesting fact about the hijack sequences. It's to do with when the Civics go under the truck trailers. The trailers were modified to be 18 inches higher than normal for the shots where the car would be under the trailer. By cutting between shots, they would alternate between the raised trailer and the one that was the normal height to pull it off. For Too Fast, Too Furious, the cars were repainted by House of Color and re-equipped with Bomex body kits to replace the Vise Racing ones. The cars have been auctioned and resold multiple times since Too Fast, Too Furious and have gone off the map. Their current whereabouts are unknown. And that's all there really is to know about these cars. I wish I could tell you more, but that's pretty much it. It's amazing how little money was invested into these cars, and yet this topic is one of the most requested ones I've ever had. I hope you guys are satisfied with what you've learned, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If any of you are looking to build replicas of movie cars, these would probably be the most affordable ones to do. Although, in my personal opinion, I would recommend going for a chassis with a nicer engine, and maybe even turbocharging it. Because then, not only will you be able to beat a moped in a race, you'll also be more in line with what the film implied the cars had, modification-wise. But hey! This video is part of a series I do called Car Topics Explained. I cover things like movie cars, race cars, importing R34 GTRs into the US without breaking any laws, rare cars, and the future of the automotive industry as we know it. Beyond that, I do vlogs, driving POV videos, car reviews, I have a series documenting my own adventures with what I do with my cars, and I also do gaming or streaming content. If any of that interests you, then have a peruse through my channel, and maybe, if you're extra cool, then hit that subscribe button and join the TRJ crew. But anyways, that's enough self-promotion from me. I, Tom, the Racing Joker, will be signing out for now. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you all later, and most importantly, keep it crazy.